Uh, my name is Jack. I work here as a uh, post sale. So my job here at Forward is to help onboarding customers. So today I want to show you something that's a little different than all the other presenters before me. So we're going to talk about data in your data networks. So um, feel free to ask questions. It's going to be a little different. So if you're not seeing anything you, understand, you don't understand, feel free to just throw out a question. OK. Um, so before we get started, um, I have a little quiz for everybody. So uh, for the Cisco guys on the call, this is a Cisco BGP configuration. There's a problem with it. And this problem nearly brought down the core network of one of my biggest customers. So I'll give everybody 10 seconds. Feel free to shout out if you already found it. So everybody, 10 seconds, see if you can find it. No prefix list control? Exactly. So. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, there we go. Right. So there's a typo right here. So there's the capital C on the prefix matching, but there's a lowercase C. So I knew I should make this a little harder. But um, so NQE or Network Query Engine is uh, is sort of tool that I want to introduce to you that can help with problems such as this one. So just take a step back and let's take a look at what NQE is. Right. So. Before me, colleagues show you that there's a collector in the forward software stack, right? The collector collects all the information from all the devices and stores them in a database. So this database powers the search pass search tool that you just, you just saw, right? So NQE is simply a query language that we invented to get data from this database, right? It's as simple as that. So you may be asking, well, what's in this database? Right, so if we start from a device, right? So let's assume every device in your network is in this database and every device has some kind of attribute to it, right? Let's just say right here, you have a platform, you have a list of interfaces, you have a BRFs, then each of these attributes will have more attributes of their own, right? So for example, under the platform, you may have things like the OS version, the serial numbers, the model number, under your interface, you have a list of interfaces that each of these interfaces have sub attributes, right? So you can imagine we structure the database and the data model in a very similar fashion as you see here, right? So you have an object, then the object has more objects, then you know each object has even more objects and so on and so forth. So that's basically what's in the database. It contains all the information you need to describe a single device. Then we group all these devices into a giant network, right? So let's take a look at an example of this query language I was talking about. So, so the query language is really here to help you navigate this database, right? So here, for example, when I say for each device in the network that devices, right? We're navigating your entire network for every single device that you added to forward. And we're going to do a scan and we're going to see if the device platform model is Nexus 9K, then I want to know about the name of the device and I want to know about the OS version of the device, right? So that's a very, very simple basic example of a query or NQE query. Okay, so that's the extent of my slide. Let me go to the demo. We're going to see the exact same thing. Right, so you already seen the UI from my colleagues. so. On the right side, there is the NQE library where we create all of our checks. Okay, so uh, on the left side, there's a file system manager, right? So this is a folder structure where you can put in all your queries. So every time you write a new query, you can store it here. It comes with something called a for library. So this is a pre-installed library with you know checks that we found useful and we added here. So these are checks or queries that you can run today without having to write anything. Right. So on the right side, you can look at, you can actually explore the data model. So every single entity in that database is here and you can explore it. You can also read the documentation, look at more examples. So we include a lot of examples and I'm sort of, you know, learn by example kind of guy. So if you're the same, then you have plenty of example to look at. Okay. So in the middle here is a text editor, right? So you just write out your query here. And at the bottom is where the results will show up. 
So let me show you the example from the slide. So I can copy and paste it here, but I kind of want you to see the experience of writing this query. So this text editor comes with syntax checking and auto completion. So writing query is actually really easy on here. Right, so if I remember it correctly, for each device in network.devices, so we're scanning through the entire database again, where device, the, let's say platform, the, oh, oh, model, right? I think it's called a Nexus 9000 and then EXUS. Then I want to know about the name of the device. Uh, I want to know the, let's say the manager IP address of the device. There we go. And I want to know about the OS version. All right. So pretty simple. If you're seeing the result that you can start using as some sort of management report right away, right? You have your name, your managed IP and the OS version of the devices. Right? If you're happy with it, you can actually download this as a CSV file. Okay, Just let me zoom in a little bit. Right, it just reflects whatever that's in the results page. Okay, so this is a basis, right? So at this point, if you want to add more columns, you know, with more attributes from the database, you can do that. If you add, want to add more filters, for example, you know, if you care about version seven only, you can filter filter out, you know, based on the OS version. But this is the basis where you can make a lot more complicated, intricate you know, queries. So. Okay. Jack, uh, I want to jump in with, with a quick question here. So you just showed us sure. uh, a UI for asking questions on data and getting the results right. back, right? So you can uh -huh. find configuration, consistency, or just find the data and all examples of it, which is, you're starting with here. Is this something you can automate with an API call? Uh, great question. So yes. So there are two ways you can automate um, queries such as this one, right? So maybe management report is not the best example, but we'll see later on there are some really uh, good example of queries that you do want to automate. But there are two ways to automate. One is via API. Everything I show you here is can be done via API. And the second one is uh, this little button here called Add to Verify. Once you click on that, this query becomes part of the snapshot collection. So we'll keep on talking about snapshots in the previous sessions. So every time there's a snapshot, if you have this query added to verify, that means this query will run immediately after the snapshot. So every snapshot will have a query attached to it if you choose to do so. And you can look at historical data or you can look at the latest data. I okay. see. So you don't need to have some external application or anything. It just it runs anytime that's the data idea. updates and notifies you. It's all there. Yeah, that's the idea. And you will see yeah. later on that it's very important for certain queries. Like inventory report, might, you don't you maybe not want to run every day, right? But if you're looking for a specific problem in your network, if you want to prevent a specific problem in your network, then you do want to run every day to make sure that problem doesn't show up, right? So we'll come back to that. Sounds good. I, I have a okay. quick question. Oh, please. Yeah, um, so you mentioned that you could append this query to a snapshot. Do you have any way to go back and say, and search the, your historic snapshots for the queries that yep. you've done in the past? Yeah, absolutely. So um, so there, there are two ways, right? So uh, I will show you a quick example right here. I have a network, right? So this is your network where all your devices are. And let's assume this is my historical data, right? So I have some date stamp on it with some notes, right? So you can pick any snapshot here, then you can execute. And since my data didn't change over time, oh, this one right here, right? So for example, 225, uh, just like a couple minutes ago, you know, I only have three devices here, but uh, you know, on 223, I have four devices. So you can show historical data, and we're coming out with features such as you can com even compare historical data. Okay. Right. For example, if you want to, if you care about BGP pairing in your data in, in your network, you can see that okay, so last month at this time, I don't really have any BGP issue, but around you know two weeks later. I saw a huge fluctuation of BGP peering going down. Let's 
scope in and ask more questions about the data. So what happened here? Is it because I add a bunch of devices or did I make a huge configuration change? You can start interrogating the data um, by kind of zooming in on it. But yes, that's an excellent question. Thank you. Yeah, we, okay. we, got a we got a double click on that one. Question one is, is it broken? Question two is, where is it broken? Question three that always follows is, when, when did, did it break? break? When exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so we're calling that progressive analysis or historical analysis. And I hope we can show this in the next NFD. Okay. So uh, let me continue. Um, so, okay. By the way, uh, NFD 21, I think a lot of, a uh, few, uh, few of our members already said that NFD 21 is when we introduce this feature. So if you're interested in knowing the use cases or why we create this or some of yeah, other mo motivations, go check out that recording. Uh, it's got some really cool stuff. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna change gear a little bit. Today, I'm actually going to introduce a new feature. All right, so my hands are kind of tingling right now. It's so excited. Um, we're introducing a new feature that enhances NQE. So let me show you. Okay, so right. Instead of taking me to this text editor, right? You're looking at this wizard looking thing. So what can you do with this? So if you scroll down here, it says config block and it says enter your config here. So in this field, you can actually paste any configuration, a line of configuration or a block of configuration here. And it will tell you if your devices are missing more and more lines. All right, so let me show you. So if I say I want to audit my iOS devices uh, that begins with just iOS. And let's say I want to audit the, uh, go to the next page. So let's say this is my com correct ACL configuration. So the idea is that if you don't know anything about the query language and like most people, most panelists on this call and probably most people watching this in the future, you don't really need to know the intricate details or the syntax or the data model of NQE, and you can just start auditing your configuration right away. So, I mean, imagine you have a very large network with you know segments of you know iOS, Nexus, XR devices across different countries with different naming standards with different ACL. You can start adding, you know, these NQE these query audits here one at a time slowly right but what's the advantage here like it's so easy to use so that means you're actually encouraged to use it all you have to do is just select a bunch of devices and paste in a configuration right so think about this as over time as you add more and more these checks or queries and as you start looking at the results you will start fixing the little things in your network okay i'm missing an acl uh, in this device that i wouldn't have caught otherwise for six months until or until it gets hacked or this QoS policy for this entire campus building is completely out of whack. That's why people are having issue with their phones. So you can start auditing your network and make sure, make it so much more efficient and correct in the long term. So um, that, that, was, uh, that also comes back to the automation question, right? So configuration auditing like this, you can also attach to the snapshot. So every day, let's say you run your automation, your snapshot collection, let's say five in the morning. By the time you get to the office at eight, or, or I guess for today, or these days you just wake up and turn on your computer, you will see all the devices that's violating one of these rules and you can get them fixed just right away. And it doesn't have to linger in your network any longer. Hey Jack, quick question. So my understanding yeah. is this works on Cisco, so iOS and XOS, and then on Arista, JunoOS and other mm -hmm. platforms. Yes, so let me show you one more time. I think I went too quickly, right? So you can choose the OS type and it contains every single device that we support within forward. Fantastic, thank you. Yep, yeah, excellent question. Okay, so quick I think I only have a few more. Yes. I, I think this is um, really powerful, um, but in terms of like, uh kind of use models that forward networks has mostly been talking about it, it's mm -hmm. been talking about um you know use models where you have one network and you know the engineer it is 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 um married to a single network um yep. and that would be the case you know like if you've got a an enterprise and you work for that enterprise 
but there are a lot of engineers out there who um, consult and they come in to either do a planning and design and they need to know what the current network looks like or they're going to do a network assessment uh, yep. and they need to know what this look what what network they're what they're looking at in terms of uh, being able to give the their customer you know an assessment of their network and this would be a very powerful tool for that consulting engineer can you talk a little bit about your your um, tools here being used kind of in that use case rather than the kind of single engineer, single single network uh, scenario? Yeah, absolutely. We actually have partners. <laughs> um, we have we partner with few companies, you know, consulting companies um, who would use, uh, you know, a couple hundred license out forward and they will go onto a customer site and start auditing their networks and say, yeah, yeah okay, so you have a very, you, you haven't been keeping up with your network sanity and you have all these issues with your management, with your QoS, with your triple A configurations. And here's a list of devices. That's what, these are the configuration that's missing on your devices and you just need to, you know, start fixing them, right? Then they will take the same, the forward tool, maybe the customer doesn't want to purchase for, but that's okay. They take the same forward tool and go on to the next customer. Right, so this also, I can also give a little color to that because I, my, well, my primary job is onboarding new customers. So that's the same experience. We'll go into a customer, you know, the, the one I work with, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 devices, right? And they will just start blasting with requirements. You know, just imagine a 30,000 device network and how intricate and how complex that network is. It's not a single vendor model, you know, with a single set of configuration, right? You, you, there are different cities with different configurations. So we spend, I mean, imagine doing that manually or it was like even writing a Python script. But with this, you can just, for one, start breaking down your devices. Remember when I show you, hey, we have all the information about your device, including the device name. So you can start breaking your entire inventory of devices into di different chunks based on their attributes. Once you've done that, you just run NQE on top of it. So, okay, this chunk was Nexus 9K, was OS version 7, that's running VPC, it needs to have these configuration. This is an XR device, it's ASR 9K, you know, it's, uh, it, you know, it's running a somewhat old code, so Cisco's ever, ever you know, telling us, okay, you, you may want to turn off these features. So, Jack, you can start just jump in shortly. Yeah. So, I think I heard a slightly different question, I want to make sure, uh, I want to check into that. So, you said one engineer, one network versus one engineer, many networks, is that correct? Yeah, Brandon, I, I'm just kind of thinking of the idea, you know, for, you know, myself, um, I'm a, I'm a consulting engineer, so I mm -hmm. am not with the single, a single network all the time, you know, um, being able to collect and rapidly assess uh, a customer network um, would be a very valuable tool. Um, so I kind of wanted to know, had you given thought or what thought you had given to having your tool being used as, you know, kind of a network assessment and troubleshooting tool rather than simply a, a tool that sits with the same network day after day and is, um, you know, just kind of, like I said, as I said, married to a single network. Yeah, I think I know what you mean now. <laughs> so it's come up occasionally in the context of MSPs, but I think we, we actually haven't sold the product in this way yet. And most of the customers have a network. It's pretty stable. It's evolved over many years, acquisitions and divestitures. And, and that's really uh, where our uh, sales model is focused. So I would, I would refer you to the sales team to see if there's a way to make that work. Um, that's the honest answer. So Fair, Jack, I'll take that. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take an honest answer. And I think it's an, it's an interesting question. It's just something that hasn't kind of risen to the top of, uh, top of mind for our sales team. I would like it too. Okay. <laughs> Same. Me too. Get the sales team to reply to you. Too. Yeah, on the the no code Q uh, and QE piece is that is that exposed via API? Is there a way to format the data yes. to get it in there? Okay. Everything cool. I'm showing you is you can do it by API, and actually awesome. APIs can make it more complicated. I mean, I'm sorry, not complicated, but it, you can actually take more. There are future features that's in the API. Um, sorry, this is a siren, right? We are coming out with a feature that basically lets you define input and output into NQE. So short, long story short, you can basically define your own API by you know, defining the input and output of a query. So 
Oh, um, cool. That's all I'm going to say about it. If you, we, I can show you more at the breakout session. So, cool. okay, let me let me just close that. I think I'm really short on time, right? So, the last thing I want to show you is that let's go back to the um, the example uh, at the very beginning of the car, right? So, remember this uh, this big problem over here was a control. So, let's just try to solve this problem using the tools we have, right? So, I'm going to audit my network and just look for this conf configuration. Right, I know lowercase c is a correct configuration. So, okay, so it looks like it found a couple of devices. Uh, so these two devices are missing both lines, but this one device is, it has a permit 10, but you know, it's missing the control, right? So, and you can see, I can click on it. Okay, so it's, it's taking me directly to the iOS 41 configuration and saying, okay, yeah, you do have a capital C configure, right? So. Um, but this doesn't really feel right, right? So it's scanning two lines to make to finding a problem that's pretty common. So let's see if we can make this smarter, right? So uh, first thing I would do is over over here is saying that permit ten, right? So maybe another device is using a permit twenty, or maybe it's a deny ten. So how can we make this a little bit smarter? So if I click on wildcard. This effectively turned this into a simple string search by scanning the entire configuration for two lines to a pattern. So it recognizes that, okay, I should ignore this thing right here. But in fact, let's ignore this too, like just, uh, just to see what kind of result we get. Okay, so now we found a bunch of other realm maps. You know, realm map test 10, that's permit 10. The over here is IPGP control, that's permit 20, you know, permit five. And they're all missing the control. But this still doesn't feel right. Right? I mean, test 10 maybe not even use control in the first place. So why does it show up here? What we need is something that's even smarter than just a simple scanning through the configuration, right? So ideally we want to look through the entire iOS configuration, look for realm maps that's used in BGP, but also it's matching to a specific prefix list. Then we want to scan the configuration again to see, okay, is that prefix list configured correctly? So, Remember this for NQE library that I showed you earlier, right? So after the, my customer um, had the, his outage, we actually create an NQE check that does exactly what I described, right? Scan through the configuration twice. First, look for route maps that's using prefix list. Second, look if that prefix list is configured correctly. So if I go down to vendor specific and Cisco, there's this check. So long story short, I'm not going to burden you with the, you know, the details of the check itself. Right, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. So all six of these route maps are using a BGP configuration, but it's also matching a prefix list, but that prefix list doesn't exist on this configuration. Right, so after we wrote this check and we present it to our customer, they ran it on their network with 10,000 plus iOS devices. And within minutes, it came returned a dozens of these, these uh, responses, just like you see in the screen, right? So they had no idea. I mean, these incorrectly configured prefix lists can be in their network for you know days or months or even years. So let me just close this out uh, one last slide, right? So I show you one example today, but these are all the different use cases we're using NQE today in customers' network, right? You can do everything from generating a simple report or complex report to finding issues such as a route map issue, but also enforce best practices, right? So it can be your own best practices, like, you know, you have to have the correct management ACL or even something, you know, industry-wide, right? So for example, maybe who's ha who has time to audit all their interface description and make sure that it is a correct description, right? It makes sure the neighbor device is correct, right? What can I use NQE to do that, right? Most importantly, we can automate the validation. Like I think we mentioned this already. You can attach any NQE I show you today to a snapshot process. That means every day or every week or every hour, depending on how often you collect from the network, we can run the NQE query, give you the latest results, and you will know right away if your network is in risk or not.